I wonder, uh, Herbert, how much stronger this is going to get. When do you see or, or, or what does the trajectory of growth look like from your seat right now? Uh, you know, we would be very happy if we could finish the year basically on levels of uh, uh, 2019. That would be our target. And there's still uh, a lot of challenge ahead of us because of semiconductor shortages. I think we could manage very well in the first quarter uh, the general shortage, but the incidents, the incidents in Japan and in America, they're going to hurt us now in quarter two. But uh, over the year, we think uh, uh, towards the year end, we, can, we, we are hopeful to recover. Can you quantify how much they're going to hurt in the second quarter. We've heard so far some pretty shocking numbers in the industry. Ford, for example, a close partner of yours, said 50 percent of its production will be cut in Q2 because the chip shortage is going to cost them two and a half billion dollars. What do the numbers, specific numbers, look like for Volkswagen? Actually, I wouldn't give you numbers now because we are fighting day by day. We are going to be hurt, but not in, in that kind of uh, magnitude. So uh, we think we will see some lines stopping for a few days, for a few weeks, but uh, not uh, as uh, brutal as the figures we see from some of our competitors. How about how long it lasts. You know, some have told us a few months and some have said this semiconductor shortage, this bottleneck is going to take a few years to play out. How long does it look like from your yeah. vantage point we're going to see problems here? Yeah, you know, shortage probably we will see through this year at least, next year probably because the ramp up and the addition of new capacities will take time. Uh, but uh, what we not hopefully not going to see is such kind of incidents which we, we can see all over the world next quarter because of the incidents we had in America and in Japan. So semiconductors are going to be uh, tight supply on tight supply. But I think there also there's a lot of uh, now uh, additional capacity added. We are in direct discussions and dialogue with the semiconductor manufacturers, with the foundries, uh, and we think that that's a it's a it's a transition. The semiconductor demand has raised a lot because of the Internet of Things, uh, and now uh, it's important to add capacity as fast as possible. I wonder about the um, the ways in which you uh, get per get the most out of your production. Other car makers have cut out certain um, functions, capabilities from their vehicles, taken out some screens from their vehicles. You've got obviously incredibly high tech vehicles. The tagline for Audi is Vorsprung durch Technik. Is it possible to produce more cars if you cut back on some of those additional capabilities the cars have? Uh, that's also one of the measures that you, let's say, optimize your uh, mix uh, and, and, let's say, at least through the year, then it should be possible also to recover uh, the higher equipped vehicles. But that's also something we are doing, but not in a general mode. Uh, that's uh, referring to some product lines, uh, uh, but uh, we're doing everything to keep production running and make the best out of it and on the market side, satisfy as many customers as possible at the right time. Do you, do you aim your production at higher margin vehicles? Um, uh, Daimler CEO Ola Kalenius was saying that, for example, um, they, they do everything they can to get the S-Class out there because, of course, they make the most money off of that. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's a uh, natural behavior. No, you would always optimize your sales results if you are on shortages. So uh, I, I fully understand what uh, Daimler is doing there. You are investing so much in technology, Herbert. I mean, those have been the biggest headlines in terms of the way you're steering your company right now. Software is obviously a massive investment that our Christoph Ralvald has been doing a great job reporting on. What about the chip side of things? Will, will you make your own chips the way uh, Tesla, the way Apple has designed its own chips? 
I think in the, there are some areas where we share uh, ships with, uh, chips with other industries, and that will remain the same. But we will see more specific ASICs for automotive. As we're coming closer to autonomous driving, I think that's a necessity. Also, today's chips we are purchasing are specific for automotive, many of those. And that will increase definitely through the next years. Is, is, is IT becoming so key? to the production of your cars that you need to add a new board member specifically responsible for um, the technology that's going into, the, into making these vehicles? The biggest step was really founding a software uh, subsidiary uh, Cariac, and uh, we are ramping up our capacities. Uh, we are filling in the uh, job cards. Uh, we're making good progress. We have close to, towards the end of the year, we will have close to 5,000 people working there, 15 companies which we are integrating. And then step by step, we will ramp up our capacity. So we are, we think we are well on track. But you're not searching for a new management board member to strictly focus on the IT? I would say that that's also an open job card, uh, and, and you know that. But uh, the, the most important open job cards we have in Carriot, so in our software subsidy, where we are really focusing on, uh, the board member would focus more on the company software side. Uh, that's something which, which is not the highest priority. I'm looking at pictures of the i4. Have to say it's gorgeous. I have friends um, who already have taken delivery and love them. You've also got the Q4 from Audi coming out. You've got the um, Taycan Cross Turismo, the wagon version of the Taycan. Um, will will you narrow your EV sales uh, gap to Tesla this year? Will you even close it possibly by say 2022? Uh, we are working on it now. We, as you said, we have good product momentum. The, the take up of the EVs is good. We have good order bank, about 100,000 uh, orders, open orders, which we are delivered. The EVs are less uh, impacted by the shortages of uh, semiconductors. So yes, and we basically we had an increase of 80 percent EV sales, 100 more than 170 percent uh, more plug-ins sold. So we're still optimistic that we can reach our very ambitious target of selling one million EVs uh, in 2021. We we've seen other costs, by the way, Herbert, absolutely soar in terms of commodities inputs. Um, so key for these vehicles, including EVs. Is that a concern for you going forward this year? Are, are you watching commodity prices very closely? Yeah, for sure. Commodity prices play a role. Steel, uh, also precious metals are really on, on uh, all-time highs. So this is a concern for us. We try to, to manage through long-term contracting, uh, finding new sources. But uh, that's going to be a challenge through 2021, for sure. As demand is raising, now uh, everyone uh, and, and, uh, and supply is, uh, is uh, constrained. So I think it's a natural yeah. development. We have to manage. Well, is, is there a silver lining in that, you know, with demand so strong and the consumer willing to pay the price? I mean, I've seen some incredible dealer markups across across all brands. Do you have renewed pricing power this year? Uh, you know, we try to, to cope with the situation, uh, try to sell the better mix because of the constraints. And we had very good margins in the first quarter. Now, this is, uh, uh, we, we are very uh, pleased with the mix of sales we got and also the margins we achieved, 7.7% margin first quarter. We are very happy. Also, high cash flows we, can, we generate for the, uh, let's say, transition story. Uh, uh, generally, you know, if uh, in, in uh, countries where we have also currency uh, differences now, like Latin America, yes, we have to price. And so far, that's going well. So the customer accepts the higher prices.